What is up guys, Taiki here, and in this video, I wanna go over the case for application-specific blockchains. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below. So on Twitter, on YouTube, um, you know, there's been a lot of good discussion around you know, application-specific blockchains, and I just wanted to release this video to share my take on them. Uh, hopefully, you know, this video can serve as a way for you to get a good understanding of, you know, what people are talking about when it comes to application specific blockchains and how it defers to the system that, you know, like we use in DeFi today, right? And then NFT mints and whatnot. A few disclaimers that I do want to share, not financial advice. I'm a plev business major. Um, I'm not like an expert when it comes to diving into the technicals. So I'm going to be focusing more on broad overviews and making generalizations uh, just so, you know, I can get my point across uh, in, in an easier way. Second, I took image and, images and excerpts <laughs> excerpts from various sources. Links will be in the description below. I'm a good student. I'm here to cite my sources. And lastly, I'm sure I got some details wrong, right? Because I am a pleb business major. And, but you know, I just wanted to push this video out, and hopefully, you know, if I got some things wrong, I can uh, I can hear from <laughs> hear from you guys on Twitter or something, and hopefully spark some discussions around like the trade offs between all these other uh, like Avalanche, Cosmos, Polkadot, etc and you know kind of have a discussion on okay like where is the space going in the next couple of years um so yeah this is the agenda i'll first go over um the ethereum scaling issues and why you know all this discussion is happening in the first place right and going over subnets ibc Pol uh, polka dot octopus network and then wrapping it up with a summary so let's take a step back and think about the goal of blockchain and you know, like why are we all here today right we kind of forget about this when we're living the day to day we chase ponzi's high apys like random like you know like pump and dump tokens i mean you know in, in the short term dopamine rules us all but the ultimate goal of this industry is to reach the state of innovation where web3 technology is competitive and maybe more attractive uh, than like web2 technology right whether that's like gaming social tokens DeFi, nfts like whatever use case you can think of like maybe enterprise block blockchain the goal is for this uh for this industry to mature um and you know go for like mainstream adoption and the problem that uh, this industry is facing right now is due to ethereum scaling issues right and this is um, applicable to most evm chains so obviously you know you know ethereum gas fees are very high i don't need to like you know hash that out um, but there are kind of negative externalities that come out of how uh, the EVM is designed. Because right now, you know, if you think about Ethereum, everything, right, all activity on Ethereum is done on the Ethereum L1, right? And maybe with rollups and like, you know, these scaling solutions, Ethereum L1 can just be the settlement layer. However, in the short term, a problem is a problem. And the question is like, does it really make sense for one chain to handle the workload for multiple mainstream applications? For example, NFT mints, right? Uh, I think early 2021, there were like this NFT hype, right? I think it was like a bubble. Um, and then it seemed like every day there was like an NFT mint, right? And people were just spamming transactions and you know, like the gas like spiked up like a thousand or something, right? Like low four figures. And you know, this has some negative externalities because if you're minting an NFT, like you might be inelastic, right? That your demand for paying gas is inelastic because you know you just, you just want to mint that NFT. However, you know if gas spikes due to a, a, due to an NFT mint, it creates problems for DeFi users, right? Because you know most DeFi users like maybe they don't care about NFTs, but if they're trying to farm on Ethereum and you know like maybe gas is like spiked high for like three hours, then it creates a problem because like you know, like I guess like you know the DeFi user they have to wait like three four or five hours to farm right it, it doesn't really make any sense also like if you're playing a game on ethereum right like you don't really care what's happening to like you know nft mints or you don't care if a bunch of dgens uh DeFi dgens are about to get liquidated on ethereum and they're you know they're like spamming transactions you don't really care right you just want to play the game you don't you, you don't really care what the hell's going on uh and you can kind of uh you can kind of see the problems that uh, I guess you know the concept of like you know one blockchain to rule them all. Maybe it doesn't really make any sense, right? Maybe each uh, like mainstream application or use case should have their own blockchain, right? And maybe and if you think about it that way, then maybe like each you know, like good application can just have their own blockchain, and we can have a bunch of different blockchains that can communicate with, with one another. Uh, and maybe that's a better way for a blockchain to scale. Okay, and you can kind of think of this as roads, right? Like, let's say there's like a Kanye concert in LA, you know, everyone's trying to go, you know, taking a bus, Ubers and whatnot, and, you know, the road, roads, roads are super congested. Um, but, you know, like, you know, I, I'm just trying to go to the Safeway or whatever, whatever to buy groceries. You know, it's like, damn, like, I, I hate Kanye, right? Or, or, some, or something. It doesn't really make sense. Um, in you know, this happens in the real world too. Um, but like, what if we can design blockchains better than, you know, just like having uh, roads that can only... Um, 
accommodate a certain amount of people. And Zika Rolla, I mean, from the people I've talked to, right, the smart people I've talked to, um, it seems like Zika Rollups are going to be the thing, and it's going to be the way for uh, Ethereum to scale, right? And, you know, just as a general simplification of ZK rollups, it's essentially a smart contract that takes hundreds of transactions off the main blockchain and bundle, bundles them into a single transaction, right? So imagine, you know, thousands of transactions happening, you know, this ZK rollups like rolls up, ro ro rolls up those transactions, bundles them together, and then, you know, uh, relays it back to the main chain. Um, and instead of you paying the gas for, you know, your own transaction, if you can share the gas costs with, you know, hundreds or thousands of other people, then in theory, uh, as more uh, people use ZK rollups, uh, the transaction cost should go down, right? I think that's how it works. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I could, like, like I said, I could be wrong, um, but you know, just going through my understanding. But obviously there are problems with ZK rollups and Ethereum scaling in general, in that it takes way too damn long, right? And I totally understand why it's taking so long, right? Um, there's like billions of TVL, they have to be careful, uh, you know, and whatnot. Um, but, you know, the problem with that is that, you know, while Ethereum is scaling, um, other smart contract platforms, they're going to ship faster, right? They're going to be earlier to market with their own solutions. And in theory, they should take away more market share away from Ethereum, right? Uh, and this has kind of been my thesis for last year and this year in that, yes, we like Ethereum, but other chains will just grow faster than Ethereum. And now I, I would like to go over a few examples of application specific blockchains uh, starting off with avalanche subnets okay and i think this is like one of the things that's gonna get a lot of hype uh, in the next month or two uh because you know it's coming out soon so what are subnets subnets are application specific blockchains built on top of avalanche with each subnet being able to handle the workload for particular use cases right sound familiar right let's kind of go over uh, how it works so for those that don't know, Avalanche has three chains. They have the X chain, the C chain, and the P chain. The C chain is what we use for DeFi, right? If you go to Trader Joe, Avi, whatever, we use the C chain. But there's also the P chain, and this is where subnets lie. And this is kind of like the graphic of subnets. It's not the most pretty uh, graphic, but you can kind of think of you know, the Avalanche, the primary network being in the middle. Um, and then these subnets, uh, which are you know, application-specific blockchains, can connect on top of the P chain, and they'll be interoperable one with one another uh, and you know, if let's say this square, it, like this circle is like, like specific to like, you know, social tokens or NFTs, then it doesn't really matter if DGENs are being liquidated on the C chain because, you know, um, that negative externality is not passed upon uh, a particular subnet. Okay. And the most anticipated subnet coming in Q1 is a subnet for DeFi kingdoms. And you know, like you know, Jewel is down. I'm still bag holding, but you know, I'm I'm farming. I'm I'm farming. You know, my 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 miners are definitely working hard uh, in the background. And you know, I think one of the problems that DeFi kingdoms faces is that it lives on Harmony, and Harmony RPCs do not scale that well, right? Um, I mean, I quest every single day. Um, sometimes I go, you know, on Harmony mainnet. I try to quest, and then it just doesn't work. Um, I had to like go through a bunch of different other RPCs, and hopefully it works. Sometimes it doesn't, and it's not the most um, user friendly, right? Um, and I think it's, uh, I think it's limiting the amount of users that DeFi Kingdoms can capture on a day to day basis. So you know, um, Ava Labs, right? Said home like beer. You know, like we're coming DeFi Kingdoms. We're gonna save you, and we're gonna pump both our bags, right? I think I think that's the general sentiment there, um, and. You know, when DeFi Kingdoms comes out with a subnet, right? Assuming that it works, right? That's, that's always the assumption. Um, you know, it's going to have its own blockchain. And the cool thing about subnets is that, you know, you don't have to use Avalanche for, for gas. You could, but you, you can use your own token for gas and for securing your network. For example, maybe on the DeFi Kingdom subnet, Jewel or Crystal will be used for gas, right? I mean, maybe that creates more demand or something, who knows? Or if, if not, if like not more demand, it'll create more hype for something, right? Um, and, you know, DeFi DGEN spamming a C chain will have no effect on game performance, right, on these subnets. Uh, and, you know, I think it's important because I think DeFi Kingdoms is one of those applications that actually succeeded in bringing, you know, non-crypto people onto uh, crypto, right? Um, NFTs did that, obviously. Um, but, you know, Eric Ebron, he's the tight end for, I, I believe, the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, I mean, I, at least he was a, f a few years ago. Um, and, you know, he's playing the game, right? I mean, does he really care about, like, DeFi DGENs getting liquidated? No, he just wants to play the game. And there's a risk that, you know, as more and more people come in and, you know, it lives on Harmony and the RPCs are down, then maybe people will just, like, don't play the game and leave forever, right? That's the problem. Uh, and that, that's the risk DeFi can this space. And maybe subnets are the future, right? Maybe subnets are the future for gaming and it'll solve this particular problem. 
Other use cases, you can create private subnets um, where the contents of the blockchains would only be visible to validators. You know, this might be more viable for like enterprises, companies, etc. Right. So, you now subnets aren't for gaming, um, but it can be for all sorts of other use cases. Next, I'd like to go over Cosmos, right? Cosmos IBC. I think I spent the majority of this year studying the Cosmos ecosystem just because I wanted to understand it better. Um, but you know, I'll try to share uh, how I think about it. So. It's really similar, right? The concept uh, from a more generalized overview, right? And not more from the, uh, te the technical aspects are obviously complex, but you know, you know gen generalities are kind of the same where, you know, IBC, which stands for Inter-Blockchain Communication, enables specialized blockchains that use the Cosmos SDK to communicate with each other. So I think the best um, way I can represent this is by just showing this. So this is um, mapofzones.com, and it kind of goes over like all the blockchains that are on the Cosmos uh, Cosmos Hub, and you can kind of see like all these lines, right? Um, it kind of means that you know like these chains are able to communicate with one another, and this is kind of similar to like application-specific blockchains where um, you know each blockchain can like specialize in one or a few things. Um, and it doesn't have to encompass all use cases for blockchains. So for example, Secret Network, right? Um, they can just focus on privacy. Juno, they can just focus on creating Rust smart contracts. Akash can just uh, focus on decentralized uh, cloud. Terra can focus on decentralized money and building applications on top of that. Persistence can focus on staking and uh, synthetic assets. And then obviously Osmosis can just become the interchain DEX, I guess, where most of the swaps happen, right? And you can kind of assume that, or you can kind of see that as more blockchains launch on the Cosmos SDK, the Cosmos ecosystem, right? And maybe the Atom token should gain more value because of network effects, right? Um, you know, imagine a world where like, you know, the number of application is like 10x from like what it is today. And they, you can assume that, you know, as more blockchains launch on the Cosmos SDK, it creates more value for the Cosmos, uh, I guess, bl blockchains that already exists uh, today, right? Um, due to network effects. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, each blockchain can be good at like one or a few things. It doesn't have to, you know, do everything all at once. For example, you know, Osmosis is a DEX. They have pretty decent AP APYs, and you know, they're just good at one thing, which is like you know, facilitating like like, like swaps essentially. Um, and they're also innovating in the form of like uh, interfluid staking, where you know, I guess like whenever you provide liquidity for I guess like Avalanche USDC right on the C chain, you can't you know stake your AVAX right, uh, to, I guess, decentralize the network. But uh, conceptually, with Osmosis, you can, for example, stake um, your LP tokens, right, Osmosis Akash, and then you can stake your Osmosis tokens, right, that's already LP'd, right, to uh, secure the network. And also the other token, the Akash network, can also be staked into the Akash network to also earn staking rewards and whatnot, right? So it's pretty interesting. Um, but by far the most, uh, I guess, Blockchain I'm most excited for Cosmos is Evmos, right? Um, this is EVM on Cosmos, right? Evmos. Um, this is coming late February, I believe. Um, it was supposed to come uh, January, but it got delayed, so it could get delayed more. Um, but you know, it's EVM compatibility in the Cosmos ecosystem because all these applications, you know, it's not EVM, right? So it's going to take time for them to, for like developers to be built out. But you know. If Evmos can come out, then you know people can fork smart contracts on Ethereum, and then I guess um, enable IBC on Cosmos, right? So you can have EVM smart contracts um, communicate with like the Terra ecosystem, right, and adopt UST a lot easier and whatnot, right? Which I think is pretty interesting. Next, I would like to go over the Polkadot ecosystem. I do admit I'm not the most um, expert when it comes to this, so I could get so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, anyways. Um, we have this relay chain, right, um, which I think people consider to be like layer zero, right, Polkadot to be the layer zero, um, and, you know, and we have these pair chains. So this is a layer chain, this gray circle here, and we have these pair chains, right, which are applications, so it's like blockchains that connect to the relay chain, and because it's connected to, you know, uh, the relay chain, it's able to communicate with one another, right, so the, you know, this particular blockchain can communicate with this one, and this can communicate with this one, etc. And uh, the relay chain is secured by Polkadot, right? So instead of these blockchains having to have its own validators, um, it can inherit its security from Polkadot, right? Uh, that's how I understand it. And I do have a video with um, uh, Dan, Dan um, from, from Akala and Karura. Uh, we kind of go over how a uh, parachain slot auctions works, right? So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Feel free to look at it uh, you know, on my channel if you're interested. Um, but the problem with uh, Polkadot and the parachain slot auctions is that it's going to require a long lockup of DOT tokens in terms of like 
I think you have to lock it up for like a year at least. Um, and it's also incredibly expensive to win uh, these parachain, parachain slot auctions. Uh, because how, how, how it works, you, you, need, you need to win these parachain slot auctions in order for you to gain a slot um, on the relay chain on Polkadot. And most recently, um, you know, Akala, I believe, won the parachain slot auction. And, you know, it required $1.3 billion with a dot to be staked uh, for Akala um, in order for it to win, right? So it's like, you know, it takes... It's going to be super competitive. It's not going to be easy for new chains, new pair chains to launch just because, you know, it's going to take a lot of money, right? And it's going to be difficult to bootstrap this much money from your community, uh, even though the Polkadot community is pretty strong. And I think one of the problems, or, uh, one of the networks that, um, that's trying to tackle this problem is the Octopus Network, right? Uh, you see here. Um, and, you know, it's in like right, right now, there's like not that much adoption, right? Um, but it's similar uh, concept to Polkadot where it's built on substrate um you can it, it's built for substrate and polka dot developers and users um and this is gonna be 100 times cheaper to launch an app chain i don't know if i haven't fact checked this but you know, you know it, it's, it's it's gonna be much cheaper than like 1.3 billion dollars right uh, that's that's the idea um and you know it's gonna be built on top of near and you know also aurora is an EVM built on top of near and the concept is near um is that you know if or an octopus is built on top of near um you know both uh, substrate evm and rust these smart contracts can communicate with one another and and they will be composable um octopus network its structure is similar to that of polka dot right it's, just think of it um or how i think about think of it is like you know it's kind of like a fork of polka dot right not really but you know, uh, you know to generalize it right fork of polka dot but it's going to be much less, uh, much less expensive for app chains to bootstrap their networks on Octo than it is for pair chains on Polkadot. Um, because, you know, if you're trying to launch an app chain um, and you're experimenting, like, you know, you're not going to go to Polkadot, right? Because, like, how are you going to, like, win a pair of chains law auctions? Maybe it's better to experiment on the Octopus network because it's going to be easier, faster to bootstrap applications. And maybe, you know, um, there's value in uh, it already being built on top of Nier. So this is kind of a kind of complex uh, visual but you know i'll try to simplify it so there's near protocol right um uh, you know it's, the, the, there's near protocol and aurora is a smart contract on top of near right and it's evm right um and then octopus is also a smart contract on top of near and it's able to you know connect these app chains together and ideally you know uh, near is connected to ethereum via the rainbow bridge near is connected to a uh, near and aurora is connected to you know avalanche uh, you know all, all these other blockchains via vergers uh, polka dot as well and then you know you, you can kind of you can kind of have near um have smart contract for rust um solidity and substrate um and hopefully the grow network effects right and you know it's it can talk to all these other blockchains um yeah and yeah i mean octopus it's like there's like barely any applications i think the biggest one is like called the bio but you know it's still, it's still like a speculative by nature uh, but you know it's you, you get the idea it's much cheaper than to launch an app chain on Octopus than it is on Polkadot, um, though there might be like security trade-offs. So, in summary, um, with ETH scaling solution, uh, with ETH scaling issues likely to persist in 2022, we can expect more hype and use cases for application-specific blockchains. Right? We see this with subnets, we see this with Cosmos, and maybe with the Octopus Network uh, later this year. For me, I'm most excited in the short term for Avalanche subnets, right? DeFi Kingdoms um, and Evmos. Um, they're both expected in Q1, um, probably like late February, early March or something. Um, and, you know, that's what I'm most anticipated for. Um, and I think it's important to, uh, you know, not only think about, you know, Ponzi farms on uh, crypto, but also think about, okay, like, where's the space going, right? And like, what is the future narrative or something? Because um, I can see a world where uh, Q2 or Q3, you know, like there's like a bunch of application specific blockchain that's built and it scales much better than like what the Ethereum axes are claiming. Um, and who knows, like maybe, you know, th this is a fad, right? And maybe it's gonna go to zero. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to share uh, my opinions, my takes on it. And like I mentioned um, at the beginning, um, you know, I am a business major pleb. Um, I'm not like the most advanced when it comes to understanding the technicals. And if I got things wrong, if, you know, feel free to DM me on Twitter, or, like, you know, tag me in a post or something. I'm more than happy to be proven otherwise. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Um, all the sources will be in the description below in case you wanted to, I guess, read more complex articles, right? I kind of simplified a bunch of things here, um, but hopefully it was easier to understand. So thank you guys for watching and have fun farming out there and, you know, be humble, be humble.